The Striker Chord Podcast. Music chit chat with your hosts, Valentina Gikowski and Amla Piriakam. We're thrilled to bring you today's episode, which is a special two-part series with some great artists talking about music and the industry, which we've named Musical Musings. We have some incredible insights from these guests, so get ready for an enlightening discussion. And don't worry, if you're left wanting more, part two will be released in our next episode. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Welcome to the Shrek Record Podcast. And on this episode, this is a very special episode for us because we got a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of musicians, um, and it's going to be a very exciting episode podcast episode i should say um i'll introduce everyone uh starting from my left hand side i've got simon uh perlman independent artist welcome simon thank you good to be back <laughs> that's right that one thing i didn't mention that they're all previous um guests yes. on the podcast yeah and we've got Arif also on bass hello <laughs> i think was i was number three i think you were number three yeah. i think and we've got Sarita Bakag. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. You were number five, I think, or six. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Something I can't like remember, that. but that was a very beautiful conversation we had yes, together. Yes. So thank you for and having me again. We'll have another one today. Thank you. And we've got the ever beautiful Amla. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks, everyone, for coming. I think this, um, we, we've sort of like planned this with Amla for a, for a while to have multiple people on the podcast and just to get everyone's view on the music industry. So everyone's got a different sort of background on, on, on music and um, different views and different approaches and everyone, you know, is doing different things and different projects. Um, so yeah, just want to put it out there, just what are your thoughts on the industry at the moment, I think, is the big question. Who wants to go first? <laughs> go, Simon. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, hmm, load, big, big loaded, question. Yeah, big question, loaded question. Um, look, I think, I think it's uh, a complicated one, but, you know, we were, I was, we were having this chat before, um, actually, um, about how it's, it's never going to change in terms of independent artists doing it because they love it, really, that's what it boils down to, but, you know, so I try and be positive, um, I think there's a lot to be said about streaming services and um, um, artists being put at a massive disadvantage. Actually, on on that good point you brought up, streaming services. You, you've you've put out a fair fair bit of songs. You've like you've put a lot of effort into that. Um, how are you getting your music out there? Are you using these streaming services, or are you not using them, or is it a bit of a hybrid thing that you're doing? Yeah, it's a bit of it's a necessary evil. So mm. I yeah, I usually pay for a distribution company that gets it out to all the relevant who are you, who are you with? uh distro kid at the oh, moment yeah yeah same yeah, same. yeah they're, they're sort of the more user friendly for me but okay. um but what i wanted to say in relation to that the, the best one i've found is is Bandcamp um because Bandcamp um the proceeds basically most of the proceeds go to the artist the only problem with Bandcamp is it's not necessarily the most user friendly for a lot of people that haven't got the app or so yeah, I found that, and, and, and even navigating, actually buying your albums, I had it, what, the experience wasn't quite there. You had to click and click and click, and then you got this version, that wave, and this and that. And, and I think it's it's a it is the experience isn't hundred percent, but yeah, it's something great. out there, right? But something's out there. So yeah, it's and the prices are well, most of them are going to. Be. Yeah, it's it's the trade off because it's it's the fairest system, but unfortunately, it's not like something such as Spotify, where you just download the app, ease of access, you know, streams. But I think the, the advantage of Bandcamp is that it's, you know, obviously aside from being fair to the artist, um, or the most fair to artists, is you can just put everything out on there, whereas some of the other streaming services, you're a bit limited in terms of what you can do, and you can put incentives for fans and so forth. So, yeah. It's what if you don't have fans? <laughs> 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 Turn, turn the fan on. Turn the fan on and you'll be fine. Put, put your mic up, Sarita. <laughs> turn the fan turn on. Turn the fan on. That's if you it. don't have a fan, just turn that's the fan on and fan cool down. And, <laughs> and if you've got a big fan, that's even better. Yes, and put the coolers and everything. Yeah. Just even if it's fight. just one fan. Exactly. <laughs> only fan. The only only fan. <laughs> oh, that's a different platform altogether. Maybe, maybe we should do something like that for musicians. 
we just you know we we, we provide s- services I mean, to to what but only musicians you know it's like what kind of services oh, are we talking about well music services <laughs> trust me whoever you want to portray your music services yeah. is totally up to you you know trust me to get the tangent that just goes off topic <laughs> that's that's anyway. all right that's what we need mate so well on 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 that topic and on 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 you know that sort of part of getting exposed to a lot of people and stuff like that and if you you've been exposed to a lot of people doing a lot of gigs and especially like all sorts like weddings and everything like that and wedding gigs you do get exposed a lot you do yeah <laughs> you, you, you you never quite know who's in the audience yeah. so i've i've done gigs where you know i actually met a producer at a wedding gig that i went to uni with mm. That I didn't realize had become a producer. So, you know, and so you all, I mean, it just goes back to it doesn't matter which gig you're doing, you always have to pretend like there's someone who knows what they're, you know, talking about, what they're hearing. So, so does that audience. give you even more jitters in your belly when you know? Oh, no. Or, or does that give you, does that drive you a bit? No, more? no, I think it definitely drives, yeah, not jitters. Um, but yeah, exposures are. I'm, I'm quite new to the digital realm, like very new, thanks to Valentino. But I'm, I definitely don't have a producer hat on. Mine's diff, more so live, you know, doing some recordings, things like that. But always for someone. I've never really recorded anything for myself. Or not. Quite. That, that, that's an interesting yeah. thing because um, you, you have done a lot of playing for a lot of people and, and yeah. session stuff. But where does that leave your creativity? Well, I think. I like to bring my creativity to the session, which is is interesting because I'm. Oh, I don't want to make the show about me, but I'm a late bloomer in terms of did everything backwards. So later in my sort of in my later years, I I've started to do all the stuff that I should have done, you know, in my twenties, if you like. But um, yeah, the creativity part is what I've basically groomed myself to do both mm. live and in the studio. So I like to bring it to the session, to where, wherever it, it is. And um, yeah. I just find that part of it really exciting because otherwise it could just be another job. I yeah. know, and I know a few um, session guys that, or session musicians that they don't really enjoy going to record. They just view it like, oh, I'm you know, just going to go do a shift at the studio yeah. and yeah. yeah and I definitely don't want to be that way I'd, I'd love to get excited about what I'm recording you know whether it's a paid or gig or not that's irrelevant for me but um I know that's a really big issue if you are trying to make a living as a musician so yeah um Sarita you're you've got a fair bit of exposure within a lot of genres now because you're you've mixed in your your world into other genres how are you finding that response from the people? Because you're you've got a fifth, a few projects that are really different. How do you find? Do the people reciprocate? Do they come back and do they say, oh, "Okay, this is different," or do they say, "Oh, you know, you know, it, 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 it's it's okay," but I, you know, I I prefer this or I prefer that. What sort of where do where do you where do you see it? Where do you see this whole thing, this journey that you're going you're going through? Um, in a context of uh, contents of like I do a lot of projects of mm. course but uh, I have my own t- creativity as well so when I play it like of course I'm a folk music artist as well and singer and sitarist and have uh, to develop with the, like you know Sorita McCarg and her band or you know working in the movies and um, thinking of that what um like at the crown as well, I did the project here by, by myself as well, or say working with Alana or uh, you know uh, with Sophia as well with the different projects or sorry, the Macang and a band with the Greek music and Turkish music and Arabic and you know it's born and it's born my yeah, God spawn. Exactly. I was going to ask you about that yeah. spawn is yeah. great it's like it's but it's so different it's 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 not the like audience they feel they every genre they find it. Like I don't, uh, for me, it's like I don't want to, or it's, it's not that I don't. I feel like I do, it doesn't come out as a, exactly the same because Sarita and Sitar and Tabla 
this geo is separate and then when i have a trio i have to have a s- different concept of like what uh, the organization is there and what the venue is there and what the, what kind of audience is there i can bring into that so how do you how do you calculate or when do you calculate when you get there or do you do you sort of see what information there is beforehand before you get there um, with regards to the venue and the audience i do prepare like, like for previous like like i need to know i mean a lot yeah. of people they go to the like you mentioned yeah a lot of people go to the gig and they mm. play and everything and same exactly if, if i'm if i'm doing a recording i had to know fully yeah. you know where i'm going to the studio or thing yeah so it's the same with the gig as well or the project as well i need to know uh, before they hand over and this i need to understand what is the concept behind mm. or what the, what kind of uh, their view is there you know yeah, because uh, like you you do the crown and then you go do the tote so yeah. you know it's a big yeah. it's a it's a big yeah contrast, exactly like right? other day i went to mm. the crown and i just like five hours i'm doing in the crown uh but there is crown i'm doing my classical plus uh, because it, the crown is like a uh, flavors of india that yep. show i did yeah. and uh not just the westerners you know or any all kind of indians they come and they ask sometime you get to ask okay can you sing that song as well like padaru mara dei so from india the well known song as well or some bollywood songs so i had to prepare because i know that this is the venue i'm going and this is the audience is going to be there and if what is the demand is there so i like to organize before that and sometimes it can be hard, difficult you know um because and, and- and this this is what i was going to get to now you're yeah. actually and this is what we've talked about with amla as well you're running you're running it really like like a business right so you're preparing your you're putting your time and effort into preparing going for a gig or preparing to going into a session or whatever whatever it might be so this is this is one of the topics that i wanted to get into the preparation the time and the effort that's involved in a musician getting prepared and 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 getting ready for a gig is not just the gig which is a few hours no your mind is like your concept of 2 hours of you may be doing 1 hour set okay mm. 45 minutes of set but the audience and the organizer and the, the venue also or you know the booker also don't know mm. they just book you for the That's concert right. and they said okay we're going to give you that much pay but it's not about the pay i don't the the money i ne- we all need but money doesn't come for me as it's a first, driver uh, yeah i'm not to focus on money is my priority i like to give music where if i'm satisfied i want to st- if i'm not satisfied how the audience is going to be satisfied no yeah. so myself true. so if if anything with the spawn as well if i'm it's a lot of stress in spawn gig you know because if i'm doing a duo or trio or uh, my own band then i know the what the ragas we selecting or say one macedonian tune and one indian tune blend together in makam or ragas yeah i guess it's put like it a completely together. different genre it's pretty right it's different genre and yeah. spawn is very heavy so yeah so every gig i do it's like my and standing up you know i i don't think so any female standing artist there who's Not playing sitar, sitar. <laughs> no a very heavy thing, instrument I, yeah I, i just want to i just want to explain spawn is a, is a punk sort of like oh actually rock. no punk it's not punk it's psychedelic, psychedelic rock psychedelic rock psychedelic rock you yeah. know but also have a meaning into it that we we write our own songs mm. and it's uh, uh, okay i tell you i was playing at the cherry bar or tot or so many venues and um, uh, the effect of the music or what uh, the spawn band as a whole bring out there was a one lady um she probably if, you know age of 50 60s in that and after the gig is finished and i'm just i uh, came down on the uh, uh, from the uh, uh, stage and she was just like uh, tears you know she had a lot of tears and i'm saying think okay you're all right and that's that said i did my back no <laughs> no i think she was uh, she was saying in the sign language ah okay that okay. that the song or the band or the whole song or what we were playing is touch her heart but she can't hear it she's deaf but she can feel it but she can feel she can't speak she can't hear yes. it and her partner was there this is it so for me it's like if that uh, touch someone to that level then my work is done yeah. you know i'm yeah. not uh, yeah but it's a lot of hard work it's when i stand up there it's like i don't need anyone for a half an hour to talk to me 
before I used to be like going out and you know I'll be fun you know I'm like oh, like yeah, so many know, things yeah. but <laughs> as soon as I'm becoming more involved it's like my brain how do I because a lot of responsibility is there yeah. you know when you see, you're I'm, there I'm going the other way now I yeah. used to be the one that never used to go out before and talk to people and stuff I, oh my god you know, I've, got a, I've got a job that I have to do I have to, I've yeah. got performance I've got a show to do and a lot of stress put on myself I'm going towards the other way now yeah. Now I'm actually I'm actually relaxing now because I actually feel that I play better if I'm I'm, I'm relaxed beforehand. So I'll go out and and I'll if I see people that I know I'll go and have a chat to them. But I just break up the monotony of what's going on in your head. Um, and I'm not quite sure whether it's like that for for you guys, but I, I, I was that person where it was really um I need to play everything perfectly and everything has to be spot on, no mistakes, no this, yeah. no that, no mucking around. Even with the people in my band, and I think they they had enough of of, of it my previous pet anyway but um but i'm learning to go to to the other side now to actually relax and enjoy all well, these people have come to see you so enjoy them you know acknowledge the people that are there um this this uh, uh, go for it i'll take over from there go, go, go for <laughs> it. so i was sort of in in a similar position so not so much um you know wanting to play everything perfectly, everything to go perfectly, but almost punishing myself when it didn't. And I was finding that after the gigs, I wasn't really, you know, like happy with myself. But lately, um, I've learned to entrust that there's like, basically a higher intelligence will just Same. make it happen. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of factors in there, but one of them is you have to have done the groundwork, obviously. So whether you're prolific on your instrument or not, that's irrelevant. You're prolific to a certain standard that's your standard. So you don't have to be a virtuoso, but you have to be at least well-versed and have a lot of you know vocabulary and all that kind of stuff. Have the confidence at that level yeah. to be able to, to do the gig. But somehow just have like a, a faith basically that if you can channel that energy to the point where you need to, you need it to use it at that moment, then something else takes over. Now, whether it's, you know, a different beliefs or whatever, the universe, whatever it is, but higher intelligence, let's call it, will take care of it. And it's funny how it, it's almost perfect. Like, not too little, not too much. It's just right and then you Kellogg's go, sorry yeah, yeah it's definitely <laughs> like a kellogg's thing and then so it, you might you may not even feel it in that moment mm. but then later on if someone's recording you think did i do that or like oh that was yeah. you know that was that sounded amazing right at that point <laughs> and then you just you know and and, and you're spot on in regards to channeling because sometimes adrenaline takes over as well um i don't know simon you you do all sorts of gigs you do solo gigs and you do it with your with your band as well a man called son and there's different variations of that project when you do your solo gigs do you find there's more adrenaline going through your body that you need to sort of have control or is it with other people on stage where you know you're finding that energy can be overwhelming yeah i mean they're, they're two different beasts the the solo and the the band gigs um Certainly, from my experience, I, I sort of I enjoy feeding off the energy of other musicians. Um, that that's not to say I don't love playing solo as well, but I think uh, with solo, there's there's a little less margin for error. So you, you have to be. I was saying this the other day to someone that you you can't let your guard slip from you. You have to be on the ball, so you can't quite relax as much. Whereas I think with a band, not that you're hanging back. I can't really hang back because I'm out the front um, playing guitar and singing. But it's more so that. Um, there are moments where I might turn to my guitarist, Sam, and, uh, you know, if it's a full band gig and, you know, he's he's doing a solo and I can just kind of hang back or, you know, go back a few metres or whatever on the stage. And yeah, then and, and just take a breath. Yeah. Or just, you know. Yeah, recalibrate. Yeah. And then, but solo, it's like, uh, I actually found this the other um, the other week when I was playing at a, uh, a small venue um, in town. It was Support Act. And um, I found that because... The usual set I had in mind was a little bit mellow. I was like, I'm gonna, you know, it was quite a good turnout at this for this band that was doing their single launch. And because I was opening, I was like, I'm gonna have to up the ante with the energy. So I just sort of felt. So how did you do that? 
because that that <laughs> that can that can affect a lot. I've I've been in that sense same situation. I'm I'm I'm, I'm yeah. curious as to how how you well what you did. Um, lots of alcohol. No, I'm just joking. You bang out yeah. you know, the bottles in the brown, brown paper bag. <laughs> yeah, da, 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 yeah. Little little help, little help from gentleman Jack. No, um, basically, <laughs> just just basically had to look at the set and go, okay, I'm gonna have to change a few things around. I'm gonna have to put some other songs in. Open with a set with a song that's a bit more uh, atmospheric, scene setting, upbeat. Um, basically, focus on the rockier numbers. So so some nights, you know, you're like I'm. I don't think I think this is going to be too slow for the crowd. I'm just going to have to. It doesn't mean that I'm going to have to start, you know, singing like, uh, you know, an Aerosmith type. <laughs> but it's not my style. I can't sing like that. But it just means that I'm going to play songs that are a bit more get the get the yeah, crowd moving. A bit more a bit, dynamic. Yeah, a bit more, more dynamic. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite it's thinking on your feet, I suppose, and and just yeah, throwing certain things out the window. And that's what you were saying before about. Uh, well, sorry, that's what you were saying about the groundwork element. Um, Doing the groundwork and, and also doing it enough times, that you know what what works and what doesn't from a mm. from a set list point of view. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what works and what doesn't, you need that that needs awareness. I think you need to be aware of what works, what doesn't, especially yeah, when you're on, on 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 stage. Like if you're doing a set show, I'll give you an example where I I, I do a flamenco show where everything is set with choreography and dances and stuff like that. There's no room to change, right? There's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where I was. Oh yes, yeah. That's where I was getting at. With um, I was about to say yeah. you've obviously the groundwork combined with um having enough repertoire, uh, like um for different and all all of us are very versatile musicians. We play in a whole bunch of different styles, so uh, we need to be able to cater. But then sometimes that doesn't work, does it? Because what we think might come across to the yeah. audience, um, they they might be having like a rough night, and then it's trying to maintain that our energy and not letting that energy affect how we perform yeah, as well. Yeah, I definitely agree. But I think it's all the, also the expectation. If the yeah. expectation is there where the people are going to sit down and, and watch a show concert style, the expectation is that they're going to sit there and watch. If they're in a venue style like at the Toke uh, or you've done other venues like Mama Chin and stuff like that. Dive bars different. as well. Yeah, dive yeah. bars. <laughs> right. <laughs> the dive bars um, is, is, is and you know and and that might be the only fan sort of thing <laughs> <You know? laughs> quite possibly you know? um but that's i think that's where the expectation lies like if if people are gonna come to your show and they're gonna see you know a, a concert style or flamenco you know, definitely yeah, yeah. they're gonna expect for them they're gonna expect to see something there that's rehearsed or whatever if it's in a venue style of show or if you're, you know, where people are sitting there and having a few drinks and stuff like that and, 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 and throwing bottles at you and all of that sort of, <laughs> you know, got a cage in front of you, Blues Brothers style, that's also an expectation. That's how I say it because then, then you're expected, like you said, you need to probably change the dynamics or put it to 11, you know, or, or something like that, of that nature, or, or change change your repertoire. I've been, mm. I, I've, um, I've done a solo gig where I'm, you know, it's only me and a guitar, right? And these people, I think, expected like a seven-piece orchestra out of one guitar. So what do I do? You know, it's like, oh, can you make it a bit more livelier? I go, I'll try. So you need to change a your repertoire and your way of playing sometimes. You know, um, it's not the ideal situation, but you need to get the... No one requested horses, did they? That's <laughs> <don't break. laughs> <laughs> important. Thing. But when I'm playing at the yeah. like Spawn or anywhere in the venues like I venue like Tote or you know Cherry Bar or uh, Max Watts and everything, I've never seen um, people sit down on the floor and listening to music. And yeah, you're always sort of it's in the background. It's just like I'm thinking, yeah. how when you open eyes and think they're all sitting there, and the bar is and Cherry Bar and Tote and you know all this venue. I thought okay, people will be like having a drink and thing, but as soon as they get into it, the music, because I think if if you enjoy it, they will love it. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's it's a, a transcendent sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, because if the energy is transferring, you know, if you're not enjoying yourself on the stage, sometimes or you're on and sometimes can be hard. Yeah, I was just going to say, you just mm. reminded me, so, sometimes though, just getting back to the solo versus band thing, because that's an important point, like I find a lot of solo gigs, you're kind of part of the ambience a bit, depending on the venue. Yeah. Like sometimes so like, true. Yeah, yeah, you'll be like, okay, you're in the front bar of such and such venue. Um, I'm not going to name names. I've had mm -hmm. too many. I've had. Uh, we won't yeah. go down that. <laughs> yeah. I've had too many run-ins recently with Just venues. Just tell me after. Yeah. So full disclaimer. No, uh, 
please contact my lawyer if there's any problems. <laughs> but um, but getting back to this, I think w- with band venues, it's like okay, there's a band playing. Let's go watch the band. W- with solo acts, where you're booked, just you're the solo guy or the solo girl, whatever. Yeah. You you kind of become quite often part of the part of the atmosphere, part of it. And they just people just coming in and out, they're floating in and out like a family might come and the kids might watch and then that sort of thing. So so I think that that's what I'm finding. Like the solo. Quite often, in my experience, if I'm just one person, mm. I'm just there in the background. But if it's a band, it's like got to try and find a way to get get their attention. Whereas solos, I don't mind being part of the background. Yeah. But also, and, and on on that, I I used to, and I, I still do, but I used to do a lot more um, solo gigs for corporates where you are in the background. That's what they're going to hire you for, and they're going to give you good money for it. And that's a, that's another thing where you need to concentrate that you are in the background and you're not at the front so you again need to change if you are a front sort of person you need to change your repertoire change your technique or change whatever mm. in that instant where they don't they, they know that you're there they just want something in the background it's just fine mm. if you're able to do that and 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 believe me that's bread and butter sort of stuff um it can be well paid um but if you're that person where you're that front man and you're eager to you're you're gonna get bored quite quickly you know, um, and I understand where, where, where you're coming from with that. You know, very, very, I feel it's very hard to do that if I'm just on my own as a solo guy. Like I, I start like getting the balance right. Like again, it's like if I'm with a band, it's like I want to, I want to kind of up the energy, up the energy. But if I'm solo, I'm like it, it is a certain more relaxed, generally a bit more relaxed feel. That's why I wanted to use that example before the other, mm. the other week in that in that dive bar. Um, <laughs> nice people. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's a dive bar. <laughs> but um, isn't it in that also like if you're doing your solo in the background as well? But there's also challenge that sound yeah. is challenging because you never know uh, listening. who's listening. Yeah. Yeah. And Def- it, it happened. It happened in so many p- times with me. And oh, then always with and, me. And uh, they come always. back, oh, that was that I saw. And I'm thinking, okay. So yeah. you have to be very aware but of like, yeah. I mean, everyone. I mean, I'm myself, I'm... Um, I don't have to judge anyone, but I'm just myself. I'm saying it every time I have to be put it out there where yeah mistakes is okay you know but try to I was just going to say because finished. being an Indian as well okay yeah. and like uh, singing in Indian music and Indian they're outside so many people out there you know Not you never true. know there, yeah. there is a lot of so criticize true. you yeah. know and yes we are learning you know I'm learning still I'm uh, trying my best and, and every time is going to time is changing so there's well the situation will change maybe um, next year we will be different mindset Correct. you know and how we're going to be it's playing. just what you said before you yeah. don't know who's in the crowd I yeah. played a gig um, where they hired me and I'm playing I'm playing my stuff and it's all like flamenco stuff and then this person comes up to me and he starts speaking in Spanish mm. I go oh, okay and I can understand Spanish mm. but it's hard for me to converse because I haven't spoken in a while because I speak English but we started talking, he started talking in English and stuff like that. He goes, oh, I know this, this, this guy in Spain and they, you know, they, they play for me. I go, ah, oh, here we go. But he was so thankful of, you know, listening. He goes, you, you, you play like they play there and you've brought me nostalgia back. So I've, I've, I've hit something there, yeah. a, a sort of an emotion. And he's, he's, he was there for the whole thing and just listening and sitting down and listening for the whole thing. Mind you, I was just a background sort of thing, but... He, he was like, he came up to me, thanked me and everything like that. And, and as you said before, it's not, it's not about the money. No. That fulfills you on a different level. Your heart level. is like every yeah. time I play, if I don't do justice to myself, mm. then people might think, okay, that was a fantastic, oh, that was a great gig. And I said, okay, yep, because my heart story, should yeah. be satisfied now. Yeah, correct. Um, correct. Go for it. I've got a funny story. <laughs> yeah. I started laughing, like, because I couldn't, I just remembered it. In 2017, I played a concert for my friend Bure. We came in back from Turkey for a concert, and we, we did Sydney, Melbourne. Melbourne was at Nightcap. Now, you know the stage is in the middle, yeah. right? So this is like, I'm sort of like an amateur MD. I've never trained, whatever, but I love to, especially, um, like, I get a few gigs for artists that come in from overseas where, we don't really have a chance to rehearse, so I'll put the band together from here and they'll just fly in and do a sound check and we're doing the concert. So I'm like, pressure's on. I'm trying to sort of control, like watch the drummer, control what 
things that are going on, remind people, okay, you got to do a solo here, you got to do. And I'm playing along, get tapped on the shoulder, and it's this lady, she's like, can you get out of the way so I can see the singer? <laughs> 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 and, and here's me, like, I've got this, like, you're you know, I've, I've your... put the MD hat on, like, I'm thinking, mate. You're in control here. Like, you're, you know, you're very important to this stage. And someone taps you on the Take and she's like, can you get out of the way so I can have a line of sight to the singer? So that actually, like, it can affect you in different ways. Like, some people would get angry or, you know, like, yeah. I, didn't, I just pretended like nothing happened and just kept going. But you know, it's it's almost crushing to the you know, the ego. That I've, I've got I've got a follow up story on that yeah. sort of a thing. We, when I used to do the the, the wedding circuit, the the, the Mustang wedding circuit, you'll you'll be familiar with this. Um, many years ago, um, with with my with my dad and. With the Macedonians, when you get going, um, it can be a very fine, it can be a very big financial benefit because they throw some great cash, right? And this particular gig, there was a there was a lot of people out there splitting, four five hundred people at this wedding, and we're playing, 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 and and the people are just nonstop. They just and we're, we're it's bucketing down. We haven't stopped for about three four hours. It's just it's bucketing. The venue owner comes up to my dad, and he goes, "There's someone parked in the wrong spot." of the car park, can you stop the band, the music, and just announce this registration place so they can move? My dad told him to go get, f- anyway. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, I'm not stopping now. No, I don't care who's parked. Got mortgage payments. Oh, that's right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He goes, no way. And then, it, and and I could see my dad just going like this, and just going like this. He went, he came back five minutes later, and asked him again. My, my, I, th- I thought he was, he was, my dad was gonna, hammering with the with the microphone because at that point and stage you lose concentration it's not about just the money coming in but you're there delegating on stage right if you're like you said before like you're gonna you know ha- have a direct contact with with, with your guitarist and say oh, i'm gonna pull back there's no way he could do that if someone's on your throat or someone's tapping you on the shoulder right but that they're they're the funny stories that you, you come up with and and i think resilience and getting used to that um, is 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 another another art form to the musician, where you know if you see something in in in, in the in the crowd and it's gonna sort of like you know cause some sort of distraction, <laughs> um, you know it, it's like it's it, it's hard to come back into that zone, you know. But yeah, that, 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 that's a, that's a funny story. It's just reminding me. Of, I of thought you story. were going to say that the car that was parked was your dad's. <laughs> no, 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 no. We 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 had different parking at the back. But um, yeah, it was it was a funny story. And my dad just told him to go get stuff. He just move, just get out, just get out, just get out. And it was like full. Yeah, it was different different times, different different stories. But um, I suppose you know from from a musician's perspective and like from 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 a musician's passion's perspective where do you um i guess I'm not draw the line but where where do you differ yourself from the normal person to the artist because we all have different personalities when we when we're like this right like we'll sit down and we'll chat with people whatever and then we become a different person on stage for you guys is it on stage where you become that different person or do you guys live it outside of outside of that <laughs> that realm well i'll go first one's definitely on stage yeah um maybe it's because i'm a bass player because you just can't be a superstar off the stage it's not possible like mm. you're you know i'm not a singer not a guitarist not a drummer so you know you just you're the bass player token bass player but definitely on stage and well the very i actually used to play drums i started playing drums when i was probably seven or eight years old you started playing drums as well played yeah yeah, played till about i don't know 11 12 my dad refused to buy me a drum kit so i kept borrowing drum kits from people and practice pads and chairs and whatever he's like i'm not buying you one because it's too loud (laughs) and then i I, I did have a little nylon string guitar that my sister had one lesson and put aside. Started playing 
fine lads picked up a few things. And one day at school, I was in year seven, picked up Fender Precision Bass that my teacher, Miss Peard, it was her personal bass that she'd bring. And I just started playing. Got a clean sound. And she's like, okay, you know, this sounds good. How long have you been playing for? I said about two minutes. <laughs> so, and then at high, we used to have these things like called creative arts nights, you know, basically like a Battle school concert. Yeah, that kind of thing. And I remember the very first time I had to perform, everyone was nervous. And I just, whether it's like something I had done, I don't know, in a previous life yeah. or whatever it is, I just started, I just took a few deep breaths, went on, and I remember it being very, very hot on stage. A lot of people are like, they get overwhelmed by that the very first time. And I just thought, no, I'm just going to do what I think I know how to do. I didn't even really look at the crowd, just gazed into space. And I've kept that same attitude. So every time I walk onto the stage now, it's like I just I'm there to do a job, perform, and I'm not really worried about. I mean, you kind of make contact sometimes. You get feedback, you get energy, depending on the gig. But if it's a big stage, I just do my job and don't worry about it. And and that's my you know artist hat on stage. But off, yeah, it, yeah, it's, not. it's 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 yeah. funny. You you go in a different sort of way. Um, Simon, you go in a different. I've seen you live. And you go in a different way. So you 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 become a different person. You become the artist on stage. That's what I've noticed. Even even with with the band around you, it's like you become that the front man. It's like when, when okay. I have a chat to you out, outside of the outside of the uh, that, that realm, it's like, yeah, you know, we're, we're musicians and stuff like that, but you jump on stage and and you you actually get get into it and you I don't know whether you you're, you know, you're, you're you're aware of what the crowd is doing, but you go into into that into that artist, a man called Sun. You get you get into it, and that's what I love. Oh, thank you. It's yeah. very kind. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, it feels a little bit unconscious, and I think getting back to what you were saying before, it, I think it was Neil Finn who said um, some of the best gigs you do are mindless, like you're not you're sort of channeling something, and I don't, we're not really a band that's that's in for that his, histrionic kind of grand. We don't do a lot of grand gestures or, you know, rock moves on stage. Like I'm not going to be doing any windmills or um, <laughs> somersaults, but or smashing any guitars. Or smashing any guitars. But but I think um, we're trying to channel. I think all of us we're trying to channel a bit of that emotion um, that, that comes from the songs. And, and I yeah. think that people want to see that. Um, even I'm like you as well. Like when you're when you're playing the flute, I can see you're you're in a different realm, and the people actually feed off your energy. Um, it, it's like when when I mean, you can see we can see that um, in the artist, and me, me being an artist, I, I completely understand that. But when I'm watching um, as an artist, I can I, I can relate to it. But everyone's got their own little thing, you know. And and this is and this is the beauty about going and watching other artists and and other 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 people because everyone's unique. Um, but I find that um, really interesting where you can speak to a person and then you can see them on stage and they they're not, they're not the yeah, it's a different um, – and well, even if I was just thinking of I've seen Sarita perform in Spawn, which um, – and, oh, my goodness, it's complete uh, – you bring a completely different energy to when you do your solo performances. You're still there. The essence is there. But it's like a – it's just like – Different person. Different – yeah, it's like um, you become this – um. This um diva that like uh, in a not in a diva I mean in the best sense it's just yeah. really exciting because like you Thank said you. there's more energy involved in Spawn it's a big band and even it's um music. I'm, I'll just say not even just Spawn like you said before yeah. the person become you 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 perform with Mets, with me no yeah so yeah. many uh, shows as well yes so it's like for me 10, 15 minutes it's like just that's just another I didn't did I talk to you. Then Alexandra is the from Monash, uh, from Melbourne Uni. I was talk, discussing about the other project as well and the interview. And they said because they, we have uh, again we have so many masks. I talked to you last time as well. Yes. So we so we have like having a mask or different hats. Different so, yeah. hats. Yeah. I call mask because or being, or having uh, you know it's like so why, we, <laughs> we, we, as soon no, as no, we no. come out you know we have a gear and everything we chat and everything and then yeah. another mask. 
where we have to put our attention to the sound engineer mm. yeah. and also with the, with the with the spawn as well because there is uh when you when i'm having my solo gig or you know one gig is book okay 45 minutes set two sets you need to play and that's it five band we all had rehearsal but when you're having a 10 bands line up or seven bands a line up or six line up because spawn is a we always have a different different um uh, the line up you know with the who's doing the opening and who's doing the headline and who's coordinating doing the coordinating the, yeah. and the sound engineer as well is so different so our intention have to be a suddenly change from the friend circle hey how you doing everything oh nice to meet you and then again sound engineer comes so you come to that uh mask again that okay you're not performing but you have to pay attention to where the sound needs to because that's man important as well can i, can the I just, sound as well can i just say sorry i just you just you um reminded me of something but getting back to the whole yeah. wearing mask i mean i know it's a bit of a cliche but we all do that you know i don't know what everyone does for work but yeah um, I mean, I've been a public servant for 20 years, and I can tell you that is a oh, far you'd bigger have, mask. You'd have a concrete mask on. Oh. <laughs> you'd no, have uh, a middle mask yeah. on. And you know, it's not. I mean, you understand. <laughs> you understand even lots. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, a lot of masks because yeah. not just even performance, not even just walking on the street as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think I you think have to art, be very the, careful what you yeah, say. Yeah, the everything. artistic mask is is the most natural mask yeah we all we all yeah. wear masks but i think it being all this being artists exactly yep. it feels like the most natural suit to put on yeah maybe that's the unmasking so maybe probably got we've got all these layers but like the trick. final yeah the yeah. final oh, one that it. comes <laughs> off reveals the artist i yeah. think that uh, yeah, yeah, you, you've got it you got a point there I reckon. but you know when that artist one where that uh, will come that once we everything done when you're playing then the mask is automatically open yeah. Because you're channeling oh. through your music and through songs, and in some places, sometimes I've shocked myself. Like in middle of the song, I just mm. burst and crying, and that yeah, yeah. with the music because you're traveling, you're not seeing outside yeah. who's that's front right. of mm. you, who's audience, who's it's there. It's all about the soul. Soul, and well, that's you're where you're connected. Yeah. The, yeah. the beauty of that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you've got no mask; you're naked. Exactly. Really. Yeah, and there is no, point. you don't need to prove anyone. No, yeah, exactly. You're in and the you moment. You're in the you moment. You shouldn't yeah. be proving it to anyone. You or, should be doing I it. I think that well, a trigger for that would be if you are, and I've, I've only recently experienced this, probably in the last five years. So I'm I'll be 49 next week, but in the last oh. five years, like all the layers only come off when. There's no judgment. Mm. So yeah, if you so feel true. as a musician that you're being judged, whether it's good or bad, because sometimes being judged for being a virtuoso, for example, that's it's like pressure. the pressure's on. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're, you're like, oh, you're supposed to be a virtuoso, but you know, you're making mistakes or whatever. But, but I, don't think, yeah. I don't think it's only for artists and musicians. No, I no. think it's for everyone in general. Like. In general, yeah, yeah. We, are, we have to be creative. If, yeah. if, if you saying. are, if you feel that you're not being judged, yeah. Yep. Then everything flows. The soul comes out, and that's where that's we what were happens. talking about this. Yeah. Finessing the flow. Finessing yeah. the flow. Well, even yeah. like um, on that, um, I did a gig last week, and I made, I posted a story of it, and uh, I actually made a mistake. It was an improv, and I, I messed it up. I saw and, it, but I liked it. Yeah, no, and that's the, and I laughed at it, it because so I actually organic. laughed. It was really organic because I was just really relaxed, and that comes with experience as well, and not caring, not. We all have that expectation, that mask where we want everyone to like us. And I let that go and I just went, oops, I made a mistake and yeah. I laughed and then everyone else laughed and it was a nice energy and then I just did it again. But it's funny how you you, you develop. Like if that was if that happened to me about 10 years ago, yeah, I would have yeah. oh, cried. my guitar, <laughs> turned everything off and start wrapping up my leads. Thanks for coming. Yeah, <laughs> yep. that was me a year ago. I was crying in my car after a gig that everyone oh. liked, but I wasn't happy with how, like, what you brought up earlier. If you're not, we've all brought it. If you're not feeling like that was your best, then. But then I went, mm. am I? Why am I doing this? And you have to almost have a why. The questioning, questioning. Why? And then you're like, you've got to enjoy it. That's the end of part one. Be sure to come back next week and continue this journey in part two.